All right, we're good to go. So welcome everyone. Um, Julie and I have decided that today we're really gonna focus on the psychology of the whole thing. So you guys, I'm gonna guess most of you have seen us probably 10, 15 or a hundred times over the last 25 years. And um, you know, we, we've done an awful lot of stuff on strategy. We get out there and, and you know, we, we really like to, to poke around and, and show everybody what it is that we do all day. And, you know, what we've learned over time is that, uh, you know, we work with an awful lot of people. We've done just a ton of uh, live stuff and one-on-one -on -one stuff and one-on-many -on -many kinds of things. And what we've seen is that uh, psychology is really the thing that winds up holding people back. There's a lot of things that, uh, that get in the way for people of, uh, of becoming successful in trading. And, you know, when you hear this stuff that 95% or 99% of people who trade the markets or invest the markets, uh, you know, wind up losing money over time. I think a big part of that is they're not paying enough attention to their psychology and they're not trying to figure out how to make trading, which is very counterintuitive and very, uh, very much not a good psychological fit for the way that human beings are wired. Um, you know, how can we take your psychology and get you to work on it and change it so that it's a good fit for trading? Yeah, we were really excited about the topic of this conference because um, time management, discipline, and psychology are exactly what we do. So we're gonna take you through a day in the life, but also comment as we go and, and show you some um, some of the stuff that we do and then what it takes to do it. All right, so that's us. For those of you who, who haven't seen, I'm gonna have a, a very hard time believing we haven't been in front of probably all of you, like I said, a million times, but that's us. We started trading back in 97. Um, Julie and I did a bunch of work while we were in graduate school where we went through and we were picking apart the markets. And coincidentally, we're both psychologists, right? So that's that's what our PhDs are in. Um, I've got a master's degree in, in uh, uh, an MBA in international business and finance from, from the Drucker Center as well. Julie's got a master's in public policy. We've got a bunch of things that sort of fit together in a weird way to make for a really good career in trading. And the stuff that we did in grad school um, was focused on a lot of the psychology that goes into trading. So we had access to all this data, um, you know, back in the late nineties and we had access to the floor of the New York stock exchange. And, you know, that's a specialist system or it was a specialist system where, um, you know, there was always one guy on the other side of your trades and it was always the same guy. And that made for some real fascinating number crunching. And we were able over the course of um, the years that we were at Claremont, we were able to put together some really good models that uh, that took psychology into account. We did big, you know, uh, Mancovas and things to go and factor out the other things that uh, that impact your trading, and tried to boil it down to just price action and and uh, you know what it is that volume tells you, what it is that price tells you, and how you can trade without a bunch of indicators and uh, and oscillators and things, and how you can just go through and figure out logically what's going to happen in the market next. Researchers publish, right? Graduate students publish, uh, college professors publish. You know, we've done all of that stuff over the years in the form of lots and lots of, uh, you know, journal articles, popular press articles. I've been profiled in uh, um, in a couple of books. I have definitely written my share of books. And it all comes back to that very first one on the left side, Around the Horn, A Trader's Guide to Consistently Scoring in the Markets. It's no longer available. We've pulled it because it's time for a new edition, right? That went through many, many printings. Uh, there were about uh, eight printings of that book over the years. Yeah, update and, the charts, yeah. add some psychology. Psychology, that's what we're gonna add. We're gonna add lots and lots of psychology because here's what's different, right? When we started trading, and people would ask, you know, they'd ask us to talk at the money shows or at the traders expos and things. All anybody wanted to know about was strategy. Like you started talking psychology, they started falling asleep. They just wanted, you know, if you show me something that makes money, then I'll make it fit my psychology. And what we know with 100% certainty is not true. So all of you can get in front of some people who are doing some stuff where, you know, they're making some money and you think, well, you know, I'm going to be able to replicate exactly what they're doing. And then you go and you can't do it. And the reason you can't do it is it's not a good fit for you. So, you know, we've come around to, in the last several years, focusing pretty heavily on, um, you know, just why don't these guys want to take a stop? You know, why, you know, we've got lots of guys who are talented traders who work with us. We've got about 300 people who, who work with us and 
all these traders, you know, the common theme is they'll tinker with the wrong parts of the rules and then they put themselves in front of risk that they shouldn't be in front of. So you get people who, you know, they've got a trade with a $2 profit objective and now they put the day trade on and before you know it, it's $4, $5, $6 against them. You say, well, what are you thinking here? But I don't want to take a stop. I really don't want to take a stop because, you know, I think it's going to come back over the course of the day. And then, you know, the worst thing that can happen is it does. And then they get rewarded for doing something that's very risky. And then in the future, they take that risk again and they blow out a trading account. So I want to point out, we're, we're going to start doing our live income uh, uh, income trading boot camps again in so June. We're stoked. But yeah. the reason this slide is here is to point out to you, if you look around those tables, right? We've done now, we've done two of these a year with the exception of last year, of course, with COVID for the last eight years. We love doing these events. Look around that table. Every person sitting at that table comes from a different walk of life. They come with a different psychology. They've got different hangups. They've got different ideas about money. They have different ideas about risk. There's gamblers. There's people who are super conservative. There's people who would never put a penny out on anything if they didn't feel like it was a sure thing. The, the common theme there as you go around the table, whether they're doctors or lawyers or blue collar workers, or there's somebody who's a farmer, or there's somebody who's a, an electrician, or, you know, we've got somebody from every walk of life who's been through this stuff. The common theme is what you have to do is get them in front of the concepts. Yeah. Show them these are the things that will get you in front of opportunity each and every day, but then show them in addition, right? Here's what you're going to have to work on in terms of your psychology to be able to go and deploy this stuff and make it work. Because the trading plans that we put out to our guys and the trading plans we train them to put together for themselves, those things are completely detailed and they show exactly from point A to point B to point C what it is that you should be doing in terms of entry, stop, target, money management, everything along the way is detailed. Nothing is more frustrating for any of those guys sitting around that table when at the end of the day, they look at what they should have done and find out they didn't do it and because of that wound up being punished, right? So, you know, the steps to success, we think, are you have to understand the playing field, you have to understand the risks. Then follow that up with, you have to have the strategy, the skills, the tactics. You have to have the discipline, and certainly part of that discipline is, you have to have a structured trading plan. You need to know what you're gonna do before you're gonna do it. You have to have every last detail of the thing worked out because if you go in and you just start firing off trades, I know you're gonna give me the phone call and say, hey, man, this is so this is great. This is so easy. I made $1,000 today. I made $2,000 today. I made 500, whatever I made today. And I'll say to you, well, you know, what, what do the stops look like on that or what the targets look like? I don't know. I just get in and then I get out when I've got my money. That's not a disciplined trader. That's not a guy who succeeds in the long run. So for us, opportunity always comes. So if you're an around the horn fan or if you're a, a trade secrets fan or, or beat the street or anything that you know, everything that we do, everything that we've always done opportunity comes to us through the cyclicality of markets and the fact that over the course of time markets move in these very predictable patterns you get a support area that becomes an accumulation followed by a markup then you get resistance up above you get distribution you get markdown right all of these things are where those patterns and around the horn come from right every single pattern that was developed is based on natural market cycles we're not trying to gauge momentum we're not trying to gauge anything in terms of opportunity outside of what is the chart telling us right now? Are we moving into an accumulation range, a distribution range? Are we getting uh, you know, resistance and support? And then is there markup or markdown? And that's, that's how simple the business really is, but you really have to wrap your psychology around it before this stuff's gonna start making sense in terms of getting you in front of those same opportunities. So we have this in here because Adrian has come up with a variety of strategies around that market cyclicality. And there are many patterns that um, under 10 though, that, that we work on and he looks at every single day and has used in different time frames to capitalize on all the opportunity available at every different point in the market cycle. In addition to that, some of the things that we do, you can be on autopilot or you could have to pilot your ship. Right. So if, you know, we're going to show you in a little bit here, the, 
sort of the notion of workflow and, and how we go and, and uh, work through the, the different trading plans that we have over the course of the day. Some of them are completely on autopilot. Others are completely manual, right? There's, there's a set of rules around them, but they're, they're definitely gonna be discretionary trades. And you know, when that autopilot is, is disengaged there, you really have to be aware of what's under the waterline. You, you have to be very present, you have to be very conscious of what's going on. Um, you know, the, the graphic down on the bottom there of the, of the gal with the notebooks, that was very much Julie's role early in our trading career. I and mean, she was just gathering data. And the first time we did a boot camp, you know, we had about a 10 foot table on one wall and it was filled with these telephone book thick notebooks. You know, those ones that you, you do the three hole punch and you just keep filling them up with, with your notes. And people said, what is all this stuff? And Julie was like, that's how we monitor what's going on. Those are our trading journals. That's where we keep track of what's working, what's not working. You know, even, everything was in there right down to, you know, we'd get up in the morning, well, didn't feel good this morning, right? Got into some trades, you know, kind of mismanaged things. That's how we shaped our behavior. That's how we made sure that we were going to be psychologically in the right place every day. We wanted to get to where this was a, a very intuitive thing for us and a very comfortable for, thing for us to work with. And then these are the various uh, plans then that we developed around that. So our core strategy is still, um, and probably always will be that around the horn intraday. It's like a swing trading strategy, but it's definitely an intraday strategy. I've got private equity clients who are, um, you know, they're definitely doing it more as a swing trade. They're doing it against options. That's a whole different ball game. Our business, intraday trading. So we've got the around the horn trades. Those are all to this day, New York Stock Exchange listed securities. We've got this fastball XRV strategy. Um, that's a, a strategy that goes through and picks off institutional trading patterns that are happening in NASDAQ listed securities, bigger NASDAQ listed securities, but NASDAQ nonetheless, right? Because it's not the same. It's not like looking at NYSE data. When you're looking at the NYSE, you're looking at markets that are being made by one firm. When you're looking at NASDAQ, you have to go and ferret out who the one firm is that's really making something move. That's what that strategy is about. We have a 2SD opening gap strategy. That one just goes through. That's a statistically based strategy, very easy statistic to understand. We're not gonna go through the actual stat today. You can find there's, there's tons of uh, uh, seminars that we've done. I think we've done them for David in the past here too, where we go through and really talk about what the, the math is behind that 2SD you opening gap. You can go gap. on traderinsight.com. And yeah, to check there's out plenty of, yeah, yeah. There's plenty of the old seminars around that, you know, we don't need to rehash today. And then there's this, um, you know, thing that we call the NASDAQ scalper trading plan. And that has become sort of the top of the heap right now for me, because I am trading, you know, pretty much all day, every day. I used to focus mostly on the first hour. Right now, the first hour has been um, not as predictable as it, as it has been in the past. I've been focusing on sort of second hour through the end of the day, trading things like Tesla and Baba and Netflix, um, some, of the, some of the big movers. So you've got to be adaptive. You've got to be able to move with what's going on in the markets. Most important thing is you got to understand what you're looking at. All four of these are very distinctive strategies. They use many of the same tactics, right? You have to have the right software. You have to have um, that you understand and can control, and you have to have time management and all the discipline. But this, you also really should have different strategies for different segments of the market to have opportunity every day. Right. And people who cherry pick wind up getting frustrated. So even my guys, the guys who have been through, you know, the, this this big boot camp experience, they've they've done, you know, eighty hours of online training, and then they've gone to this to the live event, you know. They, they go through all this coursework and stuff. And then what they tend to want to do is pick one or two of the strategies and just focus on that. And that's where they're going to, that's where they're going to try to, uh, to make a living it. And I'll tell you this, it works for a while and then it just doesn't work. Like you are, you are writing a ticket that is not at all the way that the markets are right. Like cherry picking strategies is a recipe for something, you know, I tell my guys all the time, I say the story's got a beginning and an end and some stuff in the middle you're really not gonna like. The key is you wanna get into a bunch of diversified strategies that keep you 
at, at sort of a at sort of an average level of performance for what you're doing versus trying to trying to find the one thing that's going to knock it out of the park right now and then letting everything else go by the wayside and then when this thing that you're doing today right let's say the the opening gaps which really tend to to thrive during earnings season all of a sudden earnings season's over and you know a couple of my guys who you know they were always talking about well you know i i make enough trade in the gaps i'm not gonna i'm not gonna worry about this other stuff well then when earnings season's over they're like oh my god this gap trading really stinks right now you know what's going on well what's going on is you took the other things that you've learned the other things that you've you've worked on and you've set them aside because you're looking at the thing you think is the big money so these are the tools those are the tools in your tool belt those are some of the courses we have um just to just to show you that that we have tools you need to be able to turn and pivot to the, the one you need for any one time we're going to give you access to this if you want it you would text psych to that number and then you'll get um access to both the um, psych evals, if you haven't done those, if you have done those, no big deal. And then also um, a strategy that's going to go really, it's like a 40 page PDF about all the different strategies that, that you, you go through. So that's a little bit more in depth. We want to go through a little bit today on how you plan or how you execute during the day so, right. and what it looks like. So, so here we go. Again, if if you want to do the if you haven't been through our stuff already and you want to, you know, you want to take a look, sort of kick the tires, you send that text message and you know, we'll put you in front of these things. You're gonna to have to do the work though. And you know, I'll tell you if if you don't read that, if you're if you're gonna start by not reading the 40 page, uh, you know, the 40 pages of strategy stuff, it's information dense. And if, if your first reaction is, well, I'm not going to read this, I'm going to go take a look first, then I can say you're, you're probably already done. You know, it's it's people, this is definitely a, a, a trading style that is all about people who are willing to do the work. If, if you're going to get on the phone and tell me, well, I'm kind of lazy, then I'm going to tell you, you should probably be doing something else. But this is our workflow. So our workflow is... With these strategies we just showed you. We've got a day that's divided up. And I can point to any part of the day and say, this is exactly what I'm going to be doing. And some people hear this and they're horrified because what they want to think is that trading is all about, well, I'm going to have all this freedom and I'm not going to have to, you know, I'm not going to have a boss. I'm not going to have, you are the boss and you're going to have to be a tough boss because in order to succeed, you have to know ahead of time exactly what you're going to do. And you need to have a workflow that gets you moving through these things in a predictable way every single day so that at any given time, you know exactly what you're going to be doing. In the pre-market, before the market opens, before the opening bell, I'm going through and I'm setting up bracket orders on the, the trade that we call XRV and the around the horn NYSE trades. Those are trades that don't need my attention during the day. Because he's pre-planned them out the night before, the night before. So if you come and try it or you have tried it, I really think you need to understand it's the night before. So in other words, you have a plan going into the next day and that's very unusual in this business. Right, your work has to be done today for tomorrow. Yeah. Now that's especially true for us because we're on the West Coast. Oh, good shit. And you know, we're gonna tell you that 6.30 in the morning is not when we are at our best, right? So I want to be able to take these things. I don't want to try to manage 10 trades first thing in the morning. I just want to take those trades, program them, I set them, and then I forget them, right? So Julie checks in on those later because I'll tend to go for a hike, right? We live in a canyon at the beach. I will take a hike at about 9 a.m. our time. That's noon Eastern when the market sort of slows down. But those trades set up ahead of time so that we can focus then at the opening bell, we go through and we focus on those NASDAQ trades that we've set up. So you Mala, Tesla, yeah. Apple, Nvidia. Yep, absolutely. You, well, it used to be all Apple, right? It used to yeah. be mostly Apple. Now, you know, the, the Apple trade has, you know, after the split and everything, it's it's uh, Apple has has uh, slowed down, become less a little less uh uh, predictable in terms of like these $1 swings we were seeing on the open, but they're still there. You just have to shift your attention over to Baba, right? And that's that's really giving you the the same kind of price action now that, that Apple was giving you six, eight months ago. And then a little bit later in the day, right? I'll do those same, those same trades, but then I shift over to Tesla. Like today I did, uh, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six Tesla trades, right? On a, on a given pattern that I'm looking for all the time. And 
it, this is just here to show you, right? I've got even the first five minutes of the day are segmented into what has to happen. After those opening bell trades, I move on to the 2SD opening gap trade, right? I called it Baltimore chop because it looks like an old Baltimore Orioles uh, trick that they did when they had a, a slow base runner. But that's just because it, it's graphically, right? That's, that's the way that it looks to me. That trade takes two standard deviations of volatility and says, if we get a gap, that's more than two standard deviations of what volatility would imply. Uh, we should expect on the open, then we're going to look for an opportunity to fade that gap. We've got uh, three ways to get into the trade, four ways to get out of the trade. And, you know, if you if you follow the rules, it's actually a pretty easy trade then to implement. And then after the first hour, a lot of what happens is, you know, Julie's just sort of monitoring the NYSE trade, seeing if there's uh, um, discretionary inflection trades that can happen where she'll go through and do these pivot reversals that we look for pivot trades. Uh, she goes through and does some of the money management manually as opposed to uh, letting the machine take care of it. Um, and then we monitor for more of those, as I said, the Tesla trades and the, the discretionary stuff. But, you know, look here, this is a trading plan, right? So this is what we're putting together the night before. This is not just some shotgun approach to okay, well, stock was going down and, you know, there were, there were buyers or sellers going into the close. This is going through and identifying. So for instance, uh, you see their fastball, right? Fastball is just a, a metaphor for, um, I've seen an expansion of range, expansion of volume, and I've seen volume by price data that supports the fact that tomorrow, right, we're going to have certain areas that represent inflections and we're going to have certain areas that represent uh you know, places that are sort of make or break for, for a stock. So we go through and we plan each stock, each trade that we're going to do for the following session exactly the same way. The next day, we go through and take them all. I don't go and look at this plan and say, well, you know, yum has really been interesting lately. So I'm going to take yum. And I'm just going to focus on that. I'm going to leave PGR and save and DKS. I mean, these are from a while ago. But the, the key here is I want to look at everything. Right, I want to focus on everything that I've that I've got planned, and build something that's diversified over the course of the day. Build something that I know has the power of probability on its side. But over the course of the session, the single trader killer that I've seen is the PNL on the screen, where somebody has one position that they're brooding over like a like a chicken. Right, they're just sitting there like a mother hen, brooding over that one trade. And they've got that PL on the screen. And well, I've got, you know, I'm, I want my thousand dollars or I want my this or I want my that. It's, it's a recipe for disaster, right? The key to really getting good at this is to get yourself to a place psychologically where you can build out, you know, a diversified set of trades. You can go through and analyze the data later in terms of profitability, right? So we've got all this data that we crunch all the time. If you come into the site, when you get your, uh, you get your trial, right? You come in, you log in. Once you log in, you get a, a, a dashboard like this, right? And it selects your trading plans. Once you select your trading plan, right? If you go in to our plans, you've got archives that go back to 2006 on the site, right? You can look at every single trading plan. You can look at every single, how did it play out, right? You can see the before and the after. Here's the plan. Entry, stop, target. Here's what happened the next day. Did it hit the entry? Yes. Did it hit the stop? Did it hit the target? Did it hit the money management rules? Right. All that stuff. You can go back in your trading if you manage your data this way, right? You don't have to be hosting a website to do this. If you're if you're managing your trading this way, you can go back years and figure out what it is that you did right, what it is that you did wrong, right? If your results look different than the results on your spreadsheets of, of what happened in the market then you know you're second guessing your plans. You're not following your rules, right? These are the rules that are in our trading plan. Every night. Every single day, right? I mean, we don't, I mean, Julie and I certainly don't have to look at these because we know them, but here's what I can tell you. Most of the people who come in and try this stuff don't look at them and they have no Ever. clue what they even are, <laughs> right? Because we know what you guys are looking at. We know exactly where people are going in these documents and on the site and the one place they never go is that the place that tells them what it is they're supposed to be doing, right? Everybody just wants to come in. Oh, I'm sort of going to see how this goes. Oh, that went good yesterday. Geez, you know, I'm going to do it tomorrow. And then they come in, they do it wrong. And then 
they get frustrated and don't know, you know, how it is that they're going to solve the, the thing that's right in front of them, the thing that should be obvious. So everything that you see on those trading plans, uh, when you come in, those are, those patterns are the ones that were in around the horn. Okay. So the, the patterns have been stable for all the years that we've been trading them. So since 1997, what I can tell you is if you go to a, uh, if you go to a trader's expo, you go to a money show, you know, you go to all these places that we meet people. I, I do speaking for the exchanges and stuff. And, you know, we do international things. We've been all over the world talking about this stuff. I have been talking about the same thing since we first went out there and started talking. And that was in 1999, right? 1999 was the first time I was asked to speak. The guys I knew who were there talking about what they were doing, when we started, they were all talking stocks. A year later, they were all talking options. Then a year after that, they were talking futures. Then they were talking Forex. Then they were talking crypto. Then they were talking... The, the key here is you need to find something that's going to work for you over time. We've never done anything other than what we did on day one. So this stuff has been working since we did the research. This has been working. The reason for it, markets don't change right? The that real cyclicality. Yeah. The real game here is about the markets are cyclical. And this has been the same stuff since they were trading it under the buttonwood tree on Wall Street, right? Since there was no exchange, since the exchange was a bunch of guys who would just gather around and do their exchanging under a, under a tree, nothing has really changed in terms of how you predict what the market's going to do. All right. So what I wanted to do today was take you through because of, of the topic of, of this conference and show you, you know, in the, like in the Bruno Mars, uh, don't believe me, just watch in Uptown Funk, uh, show you what, what it looks like. So this happened to be a day in January when I had taken these pictures. Um, that's my actual trading sheet. As Adrian was saying, that's what I uh, used to pull out and, and uh, put into some notebooks. Now we do most of that electronically. I still murderate my sheet like this every day. So this was the plan from the night before for that Tuesday uh, in January. That top part of the plan are the around the horns that we just showed you um, are the patterns he looks at. Those are the most automated trade we do. The next one is a set um, also New York Stock Exchange, but they are uh, much more discretionary. There is a max, there's an entry and a target, but the stop is um, a little more discretionary. And we'll talk about that as we go through it. In pencil down there, the Baltimore Chops, we'll show you what the, it is actually a, a screen that you'll, you would get if you were part of that service of what comes for the day. And then on the right is the scalps, that's also a different screen, but I put it all on this sheet so I know what's going on uh, during the day. All right, so that is a just a standard trade desk gouge sheet, right? Yep. G-O-U-G-E, gouge. It gouges down into the plant. If I'm, I'm willing to bet that probably half the people who are sitting here today listening to this are my guys. And if, if you are, and your gouge sheet doesn't look like that every day, you're already not doing the work you need to be doing, right? You need to be able to go back and just look at this sheet and get a nice little summary. That is your trade journal most of the time. Okay, so let's just go through the around the horns one by one. You get that that gouge sheet, the cheat sheet, um, also in the trading plans that I just print that one out, but you get a full sheet every night that looks like this. Uh, you can see that this is a short, it has the stock name, it um, has the pattern infill fly. And so, if, you know, as you're familiar with this, you would know what that means. Um, it says to go short, has the entry stop target, the ratio, right? You need a winning ratio. It's better than one to one or it gets thrown out. Adrian goes through what, 1500 stocks every day by hand. Mm -hmm. um, so, so these are just the, you know, the cream of the crop and 50% to target. So on the right, on the chart, that's what happened on that Tuesday. We were set to go short at that green arrow. And then the yellow arrow is 50% to target. And the blue arrow, 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 sorry, was target. So that worked well. The red line up there was the stop. Right. And 50% to the target, if you read the money management rules, the way this whole thing works is when you're setting your trade up, 50% of the target, you can have the machine move your stop to break even. 10 cents to the target, you move your stop to that 50% level. Target, we take the target. All right, here's the next one. It is uh, MDP. It's a long, you can see from your sheet. You see also the, the pivot levels um, off to the right there, but then you also see your entries and all. This is what happened again. Um, it, it says times two, because it went twice. Your first entry was that first green arrow and uh, your 50%, there's your target. It came back down. This is when we say, I keep monitoring them. If your machine doesn't automatically you know, reset, then I, I go ahead and reset. 
if um, you might have popped in on that second green arrow for the second for the second entry and or on the third one, one of the two, but not both. Um, but you got into that trade because it went uh, below our price and went back up again, went to 50 percent and again went to the target. So that was uh, two times the two times the fun. Right. And that's a money management rule for this particular trade. It's like over time, what we discovered when we did our statistical research and all this stuff, you know, 25 years ago was if you take a first entry and the first entry either goes to the stop or goes to the target, then the thing to do is take a second entry because the second entry actually has a higher probability of hitting a target than the first one did, right? A third entry we found in the research is not likely to hit the profit objective, so we don't do it, right? So this is all about just data, data, data. You know, this is another example here of one. So, you know, this one, hits your entry line, never stops you out, but, you know, drifts against you. And, you know, these are the places that your psychology can really mess with you. You know, you got in 1866, your stop wasn't until, you know, 1941. It starts creeping up there, $19.20. You know how many times I've heard people say, well, I took the trade off because, you know, it was moving towards the stop. And I've seen that before, you know, and then when it hits the stop, it's that much more painful. And, I'm, and I'll say, well, but you weren't supposed to stop out. You were supposed to wind up down at the profit objective. And then, well, did you at least get in when it came back down to the line? Well, no, because when it got back down to the line, I was so pissed at myself for getting out early. I just thought, I'm not going to, I'm not going to take this because, you know, now. So all that stuff interferes with you being able then to go and just, you know, efficiently carry out your trading plan. And here you are again, this is the ED. Again, you see the plan. It was a long um, you see what's happening. Or is this my extra inning? Oh, sorry. Look at that. This is my extra inning. This is kind of fun too. Not all of the trades de develop the first day. Um, I'll show you on the sheet when we come back. I have a little pink. It says XI. That's extra inning. So if you look at the left, that one did not develop. The, the, line, the highlighted line would have been the entry. It never hit the entry. So the next day, if the trade st is still set up, it never violated anything. It still just sort of had a pause day. Uh, I look at it the next day, call it an extra inning. Look at look what happened the next day. It did hit the original entry from two days before, 50% to target, then the target pulled back down and you could do it twice that next day. So that was that's another way to capitalize on the hard work that, that's been done the night before. So you see that the second one down with the, the pink that says XI, I identified that also the night before, so you know what's going on. Okay, here's the stocks to watch. A little bit more discretionary uh, trade. There's a max stop, but again, um, you can see you don't get in until the green arrow. You get 50% to target. Your first target's the first blue arrow. If you do something, a discretionary thing that we can also teach you on trading pivots, you could have had an extension on that also. Second stocks to watch again. You get filled, it gaps open, but if you're automated and it's waiting there, it goes directly to target. And of course, again, beyond, um, I, you could also have done a pivot trade there. If, if you have time, if you have brain space in our workflow, I might have time, but there's two of us. Adrian's already on to Baltimore Chops and, and NASDAQ. So we're just happy that this plan performs the way it should. Right. And it's not, you know, it's not a, uh, it's not a knock the cover off the ball kind of a thing. This is about hitting singles. This is, you know, hit and run and, and you're not swinging for the fences. You are definitely the baseball metaphor here with the New York Stock Exchange stuff that we do is all about capturing incremental gains and trying to be very consistent in how, uh, you know, how these things line up and how these things then uh, uh, work out for us. Okay. So that's, those are all examples from January. Cause I had those ready to go for you guys. I just wanted to show you, this is today. So this was the plan for today from last night. There were no around the horns, but there were these stocks to watch. Two of those actually went and you can see um, the two longs went uh, GoDaddy hadn't triggered. And uh, you can see there's the long, you sit in it. It's, you're not at your stop. The stop's the bottom dotted line there. Um, on the left, it goes up and hits your profit target. Same thing um, over with uh, uh, CVS. And then the fatter arrows are just showing you that that could have been a pivot trade also. So those are stocks to watch. It's a little more discretionary. So you have a little bit more uh, wiggle room to use your skills, your right. tactics really, yeah. And obviously it's gonna be based on the, the price of the equity in terms of the range that you're expecting. So something like Vulcan, of course, at 191 bucks, that had a, you know, that had an unusually large profit objective, um, you know, for one of these around the horn things, usually the profit target is gonna be, you know, anywhere 60 cents, 70 cents, you know, would be a decent profit target. On these stocks, because they're, uh, you know, 
they're big dollar stocks. They tend to move, and that can get you then, uh, you know, in front of some some bigger opportunity. So this is back to that trading plan. We just want to show you there were two fades. Go ahead and show them the the uh, oh. Uh, this is just the theory, right? So the whole theory with the with the chop or with the two SD trade is that when you have an arithmetic mean, which is the black line in the middle of the data there, and then you get a period of high volatility, right, where you're going out two standard deviations, you're two two standard deviations away from the mean. What that implies statistically for you statisticians out there is that you're going to have a reversion toward the mean. It doesn't mean you're going to close the gap. It doesn't mean that uh, you know you're going to get all the way back down into yesterday's range or that you're going to go anywhere in particular. All it means is you're going to move back toward the average before you get whatever the rest of the move is going to be. That's where this trade really managed to shine, right? Is to get these mean reversions. Very, very high probability of a positive outcome. Your two standard deviations out. Two standard deviations means you have got 95% uh, confidence. It's a 95% confidence interval of the mean that says you're gonna move back toward, you know, at least back toward one standard deviation, if not back to the actual arithmetic average. So here is that day again, and you know, I'm going to show you the ones from today too, just so you can see. But uh, you know, that day you can see I marked in. I, I usually highlight these in the morning. Um, for that's the, what the screen looks like for the guys. The that's our scanner, right? You'll see the scanner if if um, if you're doing that trial, right? If you haven't done a trial before. Um, and in this case, right, GE and RTX were the ones that I marked. I prefer the short side on the on the uh, chops. I'll tell you, they they tend to fall faster than they rise, right? And you can see here, right? They're, they're simple patterns. Um, the GE pattern there is is called a trap door, where you know you're looking for price to fall out um, and give you logical profit objectives. Um, RTX really the better setup here, seventy dollars and sixteen cents. It's what I call a one two three setup. It's that the the lows keep getting higher after the gap. So you're moving further and further into the two standard deviation move. You might even be out three standard deviations. At that point, you've got 99% confidence around that mean that you're going to move back. And in this case, your first target is going to be the low of that first bar or the open of that first bar of trading and your secondary target, the low of the first bar of trading. So there's a very logical, very learnable trade, right? You just have to put in the time to learn exactly what the theory is behind it. And then you have to take the time to learn how to do the setup, right? So you're going to follow on any given trade, you're going to follow the, the logical progression, right? So this would be a long, right? So this one gap down. And this is then a long side setup. And in this case, what you're doing is you, you learn to identify where the logical inflections are going to be. And then you map it out. So you're just putting in here, okay, the, the one, two, three move down into 63.92. In this case, it's a long, so we're looking for those lower highs. When you breach 63.92, you would be getting in. And in the case of our trades, right, we teach guys to, you know, you target either the open, the close, the high, the low of that first bar of trading, try to line it up with some volume by price data over on the right side of the chart there. If you have all these things in place, then what you can do, put together your trade, figure out where your stop loss is going to be and bracket the order up. So, you know, you just take your take your parameters and you plug them in. So you've got an entry price. That's your stop price, right? So this is always language that's tough, um, you know, for people who haven't been around trading for very long. Back in the days of being down on the floor, right? Get me in 63.94 stop, right? I want to buy 63.94 stop. That just means that's the activation price. That's where I want something to happen. It's $63.94. I want to buy this stock and I'm going to put in my sell for a profit. That's my target. I'm going to put in my stop loss, right? That's where I'm going to get out if it goes against me. That's down in the, uh, uh, the, the bottom of that, uh, that range on the, uh, the number four bar there, right below the open. And if, if all these things happen, right, if I get triggered in 63.94, that limit price is the worst price I'm willing to accept. I'm always going to have a very tight limit there because these tend to wiggle right around that entry price. And then 
the trade takes care of itself, right? So people always say, well, you know, how are you going to manage three of these things in the morning? You're going to manage them in the morning because the worst thing you can do psychologically is sit there and brood over them. What you need to do is set up a bunch of trades, right? That you've got all the confidence of your convictions and you've got, you know, that these are trades you want to take. Why on earth would you ever just set up one and then sit there and stare at it? It doesn't do it. You staring at it isn't going to influence that trade one bit. You setting up a bracket and then moving on to the next one and saying, okay, well, you know, where's my bracket going to be on that? And then moving on to the next one on a day like today, right? Where you had all these opportunities makes it manageable. Just so happens ATVI was the only one that made sense this morning as far as, you know, what I saw when I was looking at these, you know, the longs weren't set up very nice. And when you get this many, first off, you need to screen through this stuff in a big hurry. Right, this is five minutes in, if you remember our mm -hmm. timeline. Five minutes in, I have shifted my focus and I am looking at this screen right here. And when I see a ton of opportunities like this, first thing I do, drop down to those red ones. That's the short side. And I wanna see an asterisk next to the next to the symbol so that I know it's earnings. And once I know it's earnings and I know it's, it's on the short side of the market, that's the, the first thing that I'm gonna pay attention to. Then I'll go and take a look at right? The, the Amerisource Bergens and, and uh, Cerner and, and Lumber Liquidators and all that stuff up top there. You know, I'll go to those as sort of my secondaries, but my first focus is going to be on the shorts and I'm going to eliminate things like ATNX at $4.90, right? Probably if I pop that one into my trading software, it's going to tell me that security is not borrowable at that price level. Um, I'm going to look at the spreads right? A six cent spread on the open on something like ATVI that's trading up in the 90s, that's going to go right to the top of my list. Whereas something like, uh, you know, Caesars uh, over there at 103, you know, 25 cent spread, that's going to be a secondary for me as well, right? I want things that are going to be really manageable right around the open. On those longs, look at the spreads, right? Marisource, Bergen, Dollar, Cerner, 85 cents, right? You go right down that list and, you know, it, it's a dollar sixty spread on something, dollar sixteen. Those are, I have to give up so much probably to get into it. And then if it ticks against you twice, right? If it just ticks on the other side of the spread twice, very likely the spread on the bid side of the book is going to be just as big. And now you're going to be down two or $3 right away. This is a real simple matter of just putting yourself in front of the opportunity that makes sense. This morning, ATVI was that opportunity, right? And this is how that one set up. It was, it was a really simple trade. You had a one, two, three, climb off the open that tells you we're looking for the mean reversion to the downside and when you go through and look at the price data it's very easy to plot exactly where each one of the levels is that you're going to be interested in 9351 is the low of bar number three right if price comes back down through 9351 i'm going to look to get in so that's going to be my stop right that's my a stop limit order the stop is going to be 93.51. Worst price I'm going to accept is going to be 93, probably 40 in this case. I'll probably give a little bit more room or 45, something like that. 93.80 is going to be the stop loss on the trade. It's going to have a really tight set of parameters around it because if you look at the chart, what happened when price got above 93.80? It shot all the way up to $94.70. That tells me if I get above that level again, the most likely thing that's going to be, right, history repeating, it's going to wind up back someplace I don't want to go. That's more risk than I want to put on for the trade. And $92.34, the low of that first bar of trading, lines right up with the volume by price data. That's how the target gets set. So when you approach this stuff, in a way that makes sense in terms of the risk that you want to accept in terms of your psychology, that makes it possible for you, whether you're trading this or you're trading, uh, you know, Fabergé eggs or whatever it is that you're working with, right? If you can set it up so that your risk profile lines up with the stuff that you're trading and you understand the risk that you're putting yourself in front of, and you're willing to put stops in place to guard your account, and you're willing to put things out there and just say, once it triggers, I'm going to let this thing handle itself because I know what I would do if I was brooding over it, right? I know exactly what it is that I'd be looking for. I'm going to put that all in place before the trade even triggers. That puts me in front of the opportunity and gives me the opportunity to look at something else. So we got an entry. We've got a target. We've got the stop in place, right? That's what makes 
for a good trade uh, as far as I'm concerned. All right, so back to our, our day in the life. This is what the uh, scalper plan looks like, again, the night before this comes out. Uh, there's two sheets. The first sheet has three sort of likely trades that might happen, and Adrian gives three bands. So there's there is a whole course on this. There's a whole course on the, the 2SD gap also that goes into great detail about how this works. But um, essentially, you're looking for it to make these moves in these bands, not, you know, it's great if it does all the bands, terrific. Apple is a different story where he's going to give you these levels where he expects it's going to inflect. And you have to use a little bit more discretion intraday to figure out. Yeah, it, it, it involves looking at those levels and understanding how those levels sort of correlate with the pivot line levels. And then also looking at what's going on in the, you know, Apple trades in the pre-market like most stocks trade in the middle of the day. Apple is very liquid and it's it's very liquid early on. The, the positions that are being established in Apple, uh, you know, the big positions tend to start, um, uh, you know, putting on some share size around 8 a.m., right? So hour and a half before the market opens, you've already got some really good inflection levels that you can predict. And this whole thing, this whole trading business is the business of predicting inflections. So those are sort of color coded to bring you over to here. So here was Tesla. These are, uh, you see pre-market, the left hand uh, trade there is Tesla. You see that without the volume on the bottom there, right? That's all pre-market. And then uh, market opens. And uh, those are the bands that were just over on the sheet we just showed you, those orange bands there. Uh, it moved through them, one, two, three, four. Right. Um, uh, the top, I shouldn't say one, two, three, four, one, two, three. It didn't make the top band. So you get out, break even on that, on that one. Right. So, I mean, and it did it twice, actually, if you look at the second band, and this is where the discretion comes in on, on these NVIDIA, same thing over on the side. Um, again, in gray, these are, these were the, the, the lines are what were from the plan. And these give you the opportunities to enter and exit Apple. I had a couple uh, levels highlighted. Those were from the night before. And uh, you can see it just did those levels as well. And then there is the BABA um, from the day before, I believe, oh no, from pre-market. So you, we're looking at the pre-market levels there. And then you can see what's happening during the opening. But sort of the, you know, the gist of what you should be getting here. Again, we're not, you know, today is not our data talk strategy today. What we're trying to show you guys is the psychology of this stuff, right? What is it that you need to do in order to put yourself in front of opportunity and be able to capitalize on the opportunity? The big thing is you need to be able to go and create a workflow that's comfortable for you. And you need to be able to get your hands off the keyboard. You need to go and be able to work through different things that are working for you so that you're not paralyzed in front of the screen when that one stock you're trading goes against you and then you're, well, now I'm gonna wait for this to come back, right? Because it doesn't work. Now, obviously this is a day where everything worked out right. I like to show this day just because, I and mean, there's plenty of days like this. It just so happens this is the one I had and I had my sheet for that I could show you. But the truth is I like to see all these smiley faces. I don't always have all smiley faces. Sometimes it's a flat face because <laughs> it's a break even. And sometimes, you know, there's frowny faces. Of course that all happens. But this was a day to, it was a great example of showing you, you know, down the stocks wash where I say plus 75 cents with a trail. You know, I was testing out my, my trail on that one. Well, those are discretionary trades. I'm, I'm allowed to do that. Do I trail on the around the horns? No, I get out at my target and I do what I, what I was supposed to do. So this idea of discipline and strategies and having a plan beforehand so you can deploy your tactics is super important. Um, obviously having a trading plan is what's gonna help you keep your discipline. It amazes me, right? So a bunch of you have taken the, the volatility band course and you know, you know what it is you're supposed to be doing on on these trades, right? So like here, there's this notion of confluence, right? That I talk to these guys about and all the things that I'm gonna look for before I'm willing to take a Tesla trade. So those little dotted lines on the bottom left chart, um, they were all shorts today that I took, right? So each one of those dotted lines represents an entry and an exit, right? So there's, you know, if you look over to the far left on the chart, bar number four, the lower bar number four represents an entry. And then if you go down to uh, that orange line, there is a volume weighted average price and anchored VWAP is what I'm using there, right? And that represents the exit on that trade. And you can just go sort of across the screen and see where all the trades were. You wouldn't believe how many people, they've taken the course, they know what to do. What they really want to say is, 
so where are you getting in? Where are you getting short, right? Because they, they don't want to look for this stuff. This is where you get the courage of your convictions is you sit and you stare at this junk long enough that you know exactly what you're looking at, right? I've got, I've got two standard deviation envelopes on the bottom right chart there. I've got on the top, this is all Tesla, right? On the top, this is all Tesla. On the mm-hmm. top left there, I've got a volume weighted average price for the session. The middle chart on the top are the significant levels from daily support and resistance. And on the bottom left are the volume weighted average prices for each one of the little ranges that test. Every time it makes a, makes a trend move, I give myself an anchored VWAP. Every time I get an anchored VWAP, what I've got is another area that I'm going to use as a target if I see confluence there. People learn this stuff and then get lazy, right? They just want to, they want to see the money. They don't want to go through and do the work. They want to, they want to ask me. Now I've intentionally stayed away from our guys for, I needed a, a little brain space, right? So we, we went to, we've got another, another property down at the beach um, in, uh, in Orange County on, on Balboa Island. So we went down there and I swung a hammer for, for a couple of weeks and just fixed some stuff and did some stuff. And I was like, these guys need to not want me to tell them what I'm doing, right? I'm not looking to foster dependence. I'm looking to foster excellence. I want people to go and, and know what they're doing, right? And do it because They've, they've taken the time to study and they've taken the time to understand how this stuff works and now they can go do it for themselves, right? And that's always so much better, right? Psychologically than you're doing something because you got an email from some guy in Pacific Palisades, California that said, here's what he's gonna do tomorrow. It's always, always better to know how to do it for yourself. So again, you know, we're talking about the psychology of master traders. I'm amassing all this this information. I'm putting together this uh, big course. It's it's a psychology course, but it's really this. Uh, it's going to be this amazing um, interactive workshop. S- workshop. It's like a six session. Um, <laughs> Adrian's like, could you just put it out already? I keep I keep adding because it's so exciting to have all these different pieces to it. And we're going to use a coaching piece at, e- at the end of each piece or at the end of each uh, session so that you set your own goals for the week in the variety of, of things we've talked about that week. And then you can go back and check and see if things are moving forward for you in your, in your trading business. Um, there's also going to be some business stuff in there. But anyway, as I go through all this stuff, all this material, um, this is what it is all sort of um, distilled down to. And what it requires to be a master trader is understanding the environment, right? So the environment you're in, and the environment you're trading in. You've got, you've really got to know what you're doing. You can't say, oh, I'm going to trade stocks. You know what I don't trade? Crypto. I don't know what it is. I'd have to really do some, some inf- like information gathering before I did that. Understand what you're doing, because I understand stocks. Um, if you're doing anything else, know that you know what it is. You also have to be performance ready. So we did a lot of performance psychology uh, research and, and worked with some folks. And um, you have to be ready in your body, your brain, in your mind, like any trained athlete to, to go in there and trade. And you're going to have to have a, tra- a plan, uh, which includes a strategy, and you have to, to deploy your plan. You've got to have skills, tactics, tools. Uh, to get there, you've got to align your brain, body, and mind. You've got to get those three things together. It's really helpful if you use a coach or a program so you get a boost. You know, one of the, the performance psychologists I was talking to who – does athletes and elite performers like uh, musicians or you know pianists or such uh, was saying that you don't start from square one. You know you you learn from what's come before you. So if there are coaching things or way methods to get moving, that's what you use. Uh, social support always helps a lot. Obviously, you have to understand your plan and your tactics, and you have to keep learning. We always keep learning. It's one of the reasons we love doing our boot camps. We we run into folks and and get to talk to people, and we keep learning things ourselves yeah somebody somebody told me the other day one of our guys said uh you know that he was watching that show billions and he said you know that's that's based on you know some actual fund and how how the the thing runs and he says you know what's interesting there is you and julie are always harping on you need to be in touch with the psychology and every time one of his traders gets out of whack on that show what he says is you got to go see the shrink you got to go see the performance psychologist right now because it's it's 
very easy to fall into ruts. And what you want to do is make sure that you're always on the road and always accelerating and, and that the learning curve for you is very predictable and that you're staying on track. Okay, so again, if you want to do this stuff, if you want to, um, you know, take a look at what it is that we do and, and uh, have the opportunity to sort of look over our shoulder, we're going to be back in our... Uh, in our war room and our first hour trading pit with the guys um, starting tomorrow. And uh, I'm going to, I'm going to go in there and, and read some people, the riot act about uh, whether or not they stayed focused. Right. But if, if you would like to get access to all this stuff, then again, what I would say is show up, right. Don't, don't sign up for something and then not download the stuff that's free. Nobody's pestering you. Once, once you're doing this, you, you get a, you get a, uh, an alert every day when the stuff is ready and it's only two weeks anyways. So go in there, take a look at it and see, right? Does it fit your psychology? Is this stuff that you're able to go and, um, and work with? Is this stuff that can put you in front of opportunity? Is this stuff that can, can, can get you to a point where you can say, wow, I'm a profitable trader. Um, you know, or is it just something that's where you're trying to pound a square peg into a round hole? Because nobody can teach you something until you're ready to learn it, until it's going to be a good fit for you. All right. So we have got time for some questions. Hopefully there's some questions. If not, then uh, we, we finished in record time and finally got one done, uh, got one done early. I say, did we pull up the chat? I mean, we, we could go on and on and on, and I could start telling you more about the site cor site course. I'm really excited about it, but uh, but I'd be happy to answer questions. Well, yeah, I'll tell you what. A complementary style as a couple is going to be super important in uh, in trading. So the the trading room is open from. Uh, from <laughs> Bibbs, how are you doing there? The trading room is open from uh, about a half hour before the market opens until you know we we leave it open for about the first two hours. Really, the the most activity in there is going to be you know right around that opening bell and um, through the first half hour. The opening gaps tend to be valid for about the the first thirty minutes uh, of the session. When you go out more than thirty minutes, it starts messing with the statistic. Um, you're going to know that because you're going to download the, the strategy guide and you're going to read about that statistic before you go in and start firing off trades or even paper trading, right? It's important to understand the thing. Nothing that I do is a black box. Every single thing that we do is fully talked about, disclosed. Everything is, is written there in a way that, you know, you can understand and, uh, uh, you know, you're going to be able to, you're going to be able to get in front of. So these are good questions. So if you, if you want to see this, uh, Jeff, what you do is you just text psych to that number and then that'll set you up with the trial. It's yeah. an automated thing. And then Mary Jo, if you want to postpone the trial, um, you can just text it anyway. So text to that, it'll send you the thing saying that the trial's up and then just send an uh, email to Julie, Julie at traderinsight.com and say, um, we don't have our site up here. We don't yeah. have our, we must yeah. not want you to come too badly. We're only looking for a few good traders, people. <laughs> so yeah, traderinsight.com and then uh, Julie. So how long do you wait for the trades to calibrate? I mean, I'm, you know, if you're talking about how, how long do you wait for them to trigger? How long do you wait for them to uh, uh, set up and trigger an entry? Most of what we do is, as we said, automated, right? So, so I'll do the setups tonight for tomorrow. And what I'm doing is I'm literally flipping through the charts by hand because I think, you know, there's lots and lots of software out there. There's there's stuff, you know, I'm I'm well known in the world of trading, and lots of companies have licensed um, scanners and all sorts of stuff from us over the years. That stuff's great, and it does the work for you sort of quickly. A lot of it is highly accurate, but what I find is it's still to my advantage to just go and, you know, really the list of stocks, the universe of stocks on, on the NYSE, I, I bring it down to about a thousand stocks a day. And I can flip through those thousand stocks in just about an hour and have the, have the plan put together. The following day, as long as, um, 
you know, that that stock is it didn't blow out, right? It didn't it didn't gap way higher or something or gap way lower and 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 move. Well, we're gonna leave that trade set over the course of the session. And if it doesn't trigger that session, like Julie said, she'll set it up as what we call an extra inning for the following session. The gap trades strictly a first 30 minutes of the session trade. The um the the scalper trades right the the nasdaq trades that we're looking at those can be a first hour trade or they can be a trade that develops like tesla tesla i'll trade that thing all day long um but there's a very specific set of patterns that i'm looking for over the course of the day yeah this has been very popular with people who only want to trade the first hour and that's great and either you know they're on the the west coast or mountain time and they can go on and do a day job some other things and other times people like to sort of sit with it during the day the advent of um, automation has been super useful with the new york stock exchange yeah and i get it you know a lot of our guys are, are, are a lot of the people we work with are people who are retiring from a career and something and you know they don't want to sit in front of the machine i don't want to sit in front of the machine no. all day i don't sit in front of the machine all day i never i've never had a job outside of trading this stuff right and when i'm done you know i'm out i go and and take a hike i go walk on the beach um, is it not better to hold for longer term? So, you know, when, when you're trading this style of thing, right, there's a couple of things you have to bear in mind. Intraday trading when in, a, in a PDT account or a pattern day trading account, right? Let's say you go do three or more, um, you do three or more um, trades over the course of a week round trips and they label you a PDT trading account. And when when that happens, you get four to one margin, right? You get four to one leverage. So now you got a lot of money to work with intraday. So say, you know, you got $30,000, $120,000, bucks, 50000 is $200,000. You get to $100,000, you have $400,000 to work with. As soon as you hold it overnight, not only do you add overnight risk to what you're doing, but you diminish your buying power, right? Because now you go down to two to one leverage and it affects the account that you're working in. Do I have clients? Who are you? Those patterns all work. You want to use those patterns on any time frame. They are market cyclicality patterns. Yeah, I've got an institutional client. I've got I've got a, a family office client. Um, matter of fact, if you go to TraderInsight.com and go down to the bottom, you know, I, I interview my clients sometimes. I take them out for a drive in the Porsche, put the top down, and just talk to them about what they're doing. That inst that that family office client. Yeah, he's not he's not looking to take these intraday like this because you can't move that much money through through these stocks intraday. He's taking he's taking patterns that he's setting up exactly the same way. They're all these around the horn patterns of the things that he learned in the income trading academy at the boot camp. But he's taking them and he's using sort of long dated options to buy these stocks on these bigger picture patterns and try to hold them out three weeks, four weeks, six weeks, right? So they can benefit from the fact they can put more money to work, they don't need the leverage, right? They can put more money to work and they can hold these things in the longer term. This is income trading. The stuff that Julie and I do is about generating income. Where do we hold? If you wanna know, it, it's in real estate, not, not REITs, hard real estate, we have hard assets, Southern California real estate, right? Prime real estate, those are the things that we've been interested in investing in. It's all about what you wanna do, right? Where are you gonna build your future investment for portfolio versus you know your income trading this is stuff only you know because you're the only one who knows your own situation well and this is just something people layer on to what they're already doing right so yes you a lot most people do have an investment or a retirement account they layer this on as a strategy for income this has always been an income strategy for us not not a wealth building right but other people as adrian saying have used it in options to do swing trades um, and others so that all works well too. So I'm gonna, you know, Jeff, because I, I like the question there. You know, I like people who say they want to be prepared. I'm gonna pop my. Oh, that's my cell it. phone number there. <laughs> and if you want to just send me a text sometime, um, and just let me know that you know you want to talk and you want to be able to prepare yourself, then you know, that's great. Like I'm happy to take the time, uh, you know, for a 10, 15 minute phone call and you know help you think through how to how to prepare for this stuff again the same thing you know text text to that uh, uh, number there text that psych uh, 
You also get the PDF if you text. Yeah, and then yeah. you can get that PDF and you can start reading and stuff. And then just send me a quick uh, a quick email or a text or something and say, you know, I'm not really ready to start yet. Uh, and That's I wanted to talk to you before I do. You sort of get the lay of the land. You can tell, listen to us here, we are always like happy to talk trading. And those of you who have been to the traders expos and money shows and stuff, you know it as well, right? There's a reason they book us for five or six presentations at those things. Well, and our site is super, super deep because it's been around forever. Again, you're not going to find that many places. I just, I just have to put that out there because it comes to mind. People tell us that. And I thought I really seem to start telling other people that like we've been around forever. So the site is super deep on information. Go to traderinsight.com, scroll down, you don't have to be a member to get to a lot of um, videos. videos. And, yeah. yeah. And if we you had wanna... a YouTube channel, we had, you know, I mean, there's a whole bunch of. The YouTube stuff's not as active now as it used to well, be. We switched to video Most video. of what we're doing is, is just housed right on our server. If you go down to the bottom of the traderinsight.com homepage, you'll see a bunch of videos. Then once you get there, you can just click on show more videos. I think it is. And there's, there's a couple of years worth of just digging right. into trades and digging into the psychology. And here's what we did. Here's why we did it. Right. Here's a question I got from one of our guys. And, you know, sometimes I beat my guys up, um, you know, just because I've been working with most of you for, you know, going on eight, nine years. And, and, you know, Mark Bibbs can tell you that. Yeah. Bibbs, <laughs> Bibbs who commented before can tell you he has been beat up on more than one occasion pretty significantly. I take him to the woodshed probably, you know, once a month, but yeah. <laughs> But but he knows what to do with it, right? He knows he knows how to take stuff and and deal with it in a constructive way and and just make it happen. Yeah. And, you know. Yep. So the website is it's right. Up, it's right up there. But uh, traderinsight.com. I just typed in the there. Text you go. There. Type it in again. I put my email in there too. I'm better if you, you can email Adrian. It's just Adrian at traderinsight. But uh, dot com. But uh, he probably won't see it. He's buried in email. So you want to CC me if you want to. Uh, send something to him. All right. So if there's any other questions, we're happy to take them. If not, we're good. Yeah. We're good. Traderinsight.com. You got it. Thanks, everybody. It's really, you know, appreciate you staying, especially on the East Coast, staying through this whole thing to to listen to us and see what, what it is we do here. So it's it's always fun. We love it. We can't wait to get back to we're going to money show. Um, again, at some point to, to talk live. I mean, if David had something live, we'd be there in a hot minute. Yeah. And uh, we always enjoy doing that with uh, Anka and David too. It's just a great group and yeah. lots oh, of fun. I always tell people, don't invite us because we'll show up. <laughs> exactly. All right, guys. Exactly. Thank you.